This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Hey guys, it is the Wrestling Mayhem Show, episode 628. Tuesdays we've been celebrating professional wrestling. I am Mike Sorg. I am at Sorgatron on the Twitter. We are here in the Sorgatron Media Studios in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. You might have heard it before uh, before if you watch Raw and know a certain GM. But anyways, I'm here. We have a hell of a crew. A hell of a crew with us tonight. It is ladies night here on the Mayhem Show. And with us from Poughkeepsie, New York, is the only uh, Mayhemmer that's future endeavored, has a future endeavored letter from the WWE. He is Mad Michaelina. Yes. Hi. Um, to stay with the theme. I, I was going to wear a wig, but it's really hot. Out there. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to rock a wig, but it is very, very warm. Yes. Yes. I mean, we're doing something nice. We're doing, we're doing, doing something special because it's been a week since we've been back. There's been big announcements that I want to talk about. I want some expert expertise this week than just a bunch of dudes talking about women's wrestling revolution because that just seems like, you know, every other podcast. Uh, but anyways, um, also with us returning and such such short like notice, first of all. And since you, you were here like last month, I think, right? I think so. Honey Badger is back with us. Ah. Did I make a title for you? I forgot to make a title. No, that's okay. no, you're not. That's not that's my mic. I'm known for that's, not having titles. Okay. She is Honey Badger. I mean, I don't, I missed the joke. I said I'm used to not having titles. <laughs> but thank you for joining us again. Yes, thank you for having me. How was Shark Week? Uh, long. <laughs> Sorg, Sorg, um, uh, you, you, that's not a question you ask, ladies. Oh, oh. Uh, yeah. Oh, really? That's, it's that early in and we had to take it right to the gutter. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm, I'm just right. saying, I'm, I'm just saying for future reference, I understood what you meant, but, you know. Sponsored by Always Infinity. <laughs> Jeez. Thank you for bringing that right down, Mike. Oh, Thank you. Oh man, that's the tone of the show. It really is like a WWE creative meeting now. <laughs> we got men talking about women's wrestling, and uh, we went right to uh, vagina jokes. Do so, we to, um, do we need to restart the show? I, we'll probably I restart did, the show. I feel like, if I didn't say it, someone in the chat room was going. To. Oh man, we're a better podcast than we used to be, Mike. Come on. Yeah, I, I'm trying. Try, Sorg, you. I'm I'm being serious though. Like you can't just say that in public. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being serious. All right. Anyways, All right. Uh, also with us, brand new uh, contributor to the show. That's wishing she really wasn't here right now. Probably Lola Bradbury is joining us right now. Hi. How's Hi. it going? Hi. I'm good. Thank you guys for having me on. This has been a long time ago, and I'm finally doing it. And I'm finally here locally with this awesome show. And I, I don't even know what I'm going to say because you lost me at period jokes. So, <laughs> cheers. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I think you knew what you were getting into. Uh, but anyways, thank you so much for joining us. Of course, you're, you're no stranger to the podcast. You contribute to uh, one or two already, right? Yes. Um, I'm cur- Well, I used to work for PW Torch, not name dropping or anything. Uh, I am currently with TWM News UK, a podcast over the pond really cool guys. Uh, I also have my own interview podcast that has been sort of on a break, uh, mm-hmm. but I've interviewed guys like Lance Hoyt, uh, Ian Gavani, uh, Angel Cruz, um, one half of the Progress Tag Team Champions, and now participating in NXT UK James Drake. So getting ahead of everything. So That's it's awesome. been really fun. It's been a really wild ride. Uh, it's been doing this for a year and hopefully to another year. So did, did yeah. I did I hear podcast tag team champions in there somewhere? I think I might have said that. Progress. Oh, oh progress. progress. Yeah. Oh, okay. Gotcha. 
Gotcha. Um, uh, but uh, thank you so much for joining us and, and look forward to uh, getting your reviews on uh, some of the stuff we have lined up here tonight, uh, which I realized I didn't review you with you guys. So surprise topics tonight, guys. It'll be good. It'll be good, as it usually is. Oh, good. Uh, but anyways, uh, this is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Uh, thanks to our uh, buddy Basic Sickness for the intro music you heard coming into this, if you're here. Okay, maybe not the live part. Uh, but also, you can check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com, where you can find links to, and to subscribe to us on podcast and video forum please you know like and share and us uh, and and review us uh, that really helps get us in front of other people and uh, look us up on your favorite platform if we're not on your favorite platform and we should be you can hit us up at uh, some of our uh contacts here such as our email address good times good times at wrestling mayhem show.com on 412-206 wms0 and uh, at mayhem show on the twitter there's a lot of chatter that goes on over there partially thanks to mad mike and some other people on the uh, mayhem crew here especially on monday nights around lucha underground or whenever mike gets home from whatever he does in mad mike time uh and, and watches a show whatever that may be usually lucha underground or run night raw most likely lucha underground most yeah. likely lucha underground let's be yeah. honest about that yeah 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 of course and uh of course you can join us here every tuesday on facebook live at 9 p.m eastern time i swear we're not going to take a week off for a while i know i i missed us too last week but i hope you guys did enjoy the impact therapy too that we had with mad mike and shirley doe talking we, about impact wrestling and tna we already have a request in the chat room for a third and yeah, of course i mean there's <laughs> going to be more there's going to be more, and I'm trying to get Shirley Doe to do another. There's another project in the wings with him that uh, may may be out there, hopefully sooner than later. Uh, so we're working on that too. So I will get, get some of you guys excited about that because I know you guys can't get enough Shirley Doe talking about wrestling, especially wrestling he may or may not like. Uh, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, interesting. yes i also thanks you you can uh catch us thank you to our west coast uh streaming partner uh the 405 media.com that's carrying us every night at 9 p.m pacific time midnight eastern so you can fall asleep to the sweet sounds of mayhem and also okay we talked to the patreon people this week <laughs> We I actually legit had conf- I had a conversations with employees of Patreon. Uh, so uh, this may be the last time that we do our giveaways. We we'll, it won't be officially be Patreon. We might still do it, but it will, it will be a Patreon Rumble. But may or may not be against uh, Patreon's terms of service. And this uh, rampage poster with the Rock will be on the line to anybody that uh, may be patronizing uh, us over there uh, by the end of the month, which is ends in about. Ooh, two and a half hours. Uh, but <laughs> as of this recording. But thank you to our Patreon supporters at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show, including Bo Diggity. Woo! Ed Burke, Bobby F. J. Town, Tina Keys, and the Matthew and Jennifer Carlin's Foundation for Podcast Betterment. Page two. Uh Pocky Club five dollar level. Those guys are getting some special stuff, including they got a special fan cam. I was the fan uh of our friend the Savage Gentleman uh and Lady Frost uh taking on the nerd at the gathering of the jugglos. You only get that on the Pocky Club five dollar level and up on the Patreon page. Uh and that includes Occupy Pro Wrestling, Christopher Bishop. Uh, Bradley Ruthers, Doc Remedy, and Dave Podner, and also our friends at the Pizza Club, $10 level, Billy Johnson, and J.D. Jones. Thank you, everybody, for helping keep the lights on here in the Mayhem Studios. I'm sorry, the Sorgatron Media Studios, where there is mayhem. That was the old studio. Uh, Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. And a shout-out, go, go support Pretty and Proper that just started their Patreon page today, too. Uh, support uh, is a new, it's a different way to support indie wrestling and those guys over there. So let's get into the topics of the show, guys. This is what we're here for, not the lewd jokes at the top of the hour. Uh, <laughs> so while while uh, we were gallivanting um, um, in Philadelphia last year or last week, jeez, it's Aww. been a while. It feels like it's been Sorg a while. Sorg has ring rust, everyone. I have ring rust. I do have ring rust. I'm which, traveling. Which instead of doing the podcast, I'm watching Colt Cabana present Hall of Fame of Podcasting Awards was how I spent my last Tuesday night. <laughs> Like, that was really surreal. Like, I thought I was not going to experience professional wrestling things. Um, but anyways, WWE announces the uh, WWE Evolution show, which is going to be the first all-women's um, pay-per-view coming up here. And I think it's the end of October. 
if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, end of October in uh, Nassau Coliseum. So uh, we had representatives on stage uh, last week from, I mean, Nikki Cross. Um, I, I do love the the meme that went around. Nikki Cross sneaks out on Kate on stage. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, but uh, apparently going to represent, of course, Raw, SmackDown women, uh, as well as NXT and WWE UK. I think the finals of the May Young tournament are officially going to happen at this pay-per-view. Yes, um, indeed. Which are usually pre-taped in studio full style style. Um, and um, no, the finals. The finals has always been live, have, was live last year. But I mean the rest of the rest of the tournament. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. The tapings are happening like in mid August. I, I am curious I think if they're going to be constantly spoiled. By the way. Yes. Yes. Yeah, it, it's gonna because it's probably gonna be at least a month. I think until that stuff starts airing. So. Yeah, and, and they they aired it kind of. Um, strange where they, they, well, CWC was weekly. This, they released it like batches, right? Like each round at a time, which Mm -hmm. was kind of interesting. So I wonder if they're going to do that kind of format. I mean, obviously they're kind of experimenting with kind of release releases and everything like this. Um, so I guess initially, um, what are your thoughts on an all women's pay-per-view? Is it, is it about time or, or, you know, uh, should this have happened a while ago with all the stuff that we've had uh, in the last couple of years? Badger? Um, I think it'll be interesting. Um, you know, I think they're smart to continuously top themselves. You know, they started with the May Young Classic, which got a lot of buzz and was pretty successful. So I think it'll be very interesting to give them... I, I'll, I'm waiting to see the production of it. That's that's my thing always, as I want to see how it's executed. Um, Because there's a lot of things that look good on paper or sound really exciting, and then we get there and it's like, oh, we should have rethought, you know, rethink this. Like that uh, ECW pay per view that WWE did (laughs) for uh, with the with the elimination chamber. That went December to December. Yeah, that went so interesting. Or what was the was it the Raw? um, What was the one where they did the old school where like. They had three matches, and Undertaker walked out. Yeah, and they paid yeah. a ridiculous amount of oh, money. The twenty fifth anniversary. Twenty fifth. I thought it was the anniversary. Yeah, yeah something like that. That where, probably looked great on paper where until we, where we caught Jr. sleeping and yeah, yeah fans yeah. were just chanting over everything. So again, um, I, I mean, I'm I'm all for any more, you know, promotion of like you know women's wrestling and and creating those um, opportunities for. Um, people coming up. There's a lot of people I um, kind of saw for the May Young Classic. I'm really excited to see um, that they definitely deserve that spot. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think it'll just help with the constant, not not to sound cheesy, but like the evolution of, you know, the rotating wheel of, you know, seeing people keep steadily moving up. So we'll, we'll see what happens. And, and and they're not they're not they're not holding off too much on, on the arena that this is going to be. They're going to have it at the Nassau Col- Coliseum, which is at Many of pay per views and big shows over the years, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, sixteen thousand uh, as far as basketball th- and concerts goes. So, I mean, it's 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 a full size arena that they're going to do this in. I think the last time they had a pay per view there was two thousand two, though. Really, really. I, I mean, think that was the last time. I don't think it's the biggest of venues. Ooh, like it's not. It, it is. It is not. I was no. there. Um, I was there when they reopened the Coliseum for the Superstar Shakeup last right, year. Right, right. But but it's not there. like they're doing this at full sale. I'm interested to see. I mean, I don't know. If, I, we'll probably never know this, but I'm interested to see what size ring they use. Really? Because I think if they were, well, it, it's one of those like kind of uh, behind the scenes things where, um, you know, as a female wrestler, you're kind of taught to cut the ring in half just because, especially for me, like I'm so short that it looks ridiculous me running across a 20 foot ring because I'm literally sprinting. Mm-hmm. Whereas. I'm just inter- I'm interested if Phil takes things like that into consideration to make them look stronger. Have they done that with May Young Classics in the past? Because I mean, generally the women are in the same ring as the yeah, guys. Yeah, I guess they would. Yeah, see, it's, so. that's where you fall into like, well, they should you know, they shouldn't have to adjust it for that. But it's one of those things where I just hope that they build them to look the best they can. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Not, yeah just run into little things like that. But I guess you're right. I mean, they wrestle in a full size ring, so it would actually be stupid. Yeah. To and give they kind them of do the different... same thing. The cruiserweights are in the same side ring too. That's that, true. that the guys, you know, early in the night are, I mean, yeah, they're, cause, they're cause not falling up. Are... Go ahead. A lot of them train at the performance or beforehand and all performance or rings are the same size. So yeah, that was actually dumb. So just scratch that. <laughs> it's a good idea though. It's a good thought though. 
Um, but no, I, I think it'll be interesting. Uh, Lola, what do you think about this uh, announcement? I know you've been you've been tweeting a lot about it uh, in the last week. Yeah. Um, so I completely agree with Badger. It's so cool to have certain perspectives from a wrestler's point of view, and then on the other side of things that as we view as watchers and viewers and supporters. Um, I I had mixed thoughts and feelings when they first announced it, um, and obviously. Twitter isn't the greatest place sometimes, and sometimes you gotta keep screaming at people. Um, but I feel, uh, I, I, I don't wanna play devil's advocate, but I, I wanna be positive about it because it is a big step for the women, it is a big deal. Um, because the women are constantly, whether you're wrestling or just as a, a content creator, you're constantly living in the shadows of what men do. And I think they can easily steal the show like they did uh, with the Women's Royal Rumble, and they will continue to steal the show. Um, I feel, part of me feels like this is kind of an apology for the Greatest Royal Rumble because there was so much backlash. Mm-hmm. Um, and to be fair, uh, we all know writing isn't the greatest on Raw. Um, <laughs> and it, well, it, it, I, when you have women and you want to build a strong women's division, you need perspective from a woman to write it and, and produce it. And I think that's where they misstep constantly is because mm-hmm. they're, they have these views and kind of perceptions of women that aren't entirely accurate at all. And that's frustrating to view. Um, and I, I honestly feel like if we make and put forth an effort, um, I feel like with Triple H behind it, I think he can do with it great justice uh, because he does so well with NXT and building women and building the characters. And that's why NXT separates itself from main roster. Mm. Um, And I just feel like we need something solid because if they have any missteps, if they, for example, um, James Ellsworth, great local guy, nothing against him, but his character is kind of coming off as condescending and sexist. Um, And and he's meant to be that way. I I get that. Mm -hmm. But whenever he was involved with the women's stuff, and I'm kind of glad he got fired in a kayfabe retrospect because I feel like if he would help Carmella at the, uh, at the Evolution pay-per-view, like he helped her to win the briefcase, I feel like that'd be such a huge cut on all the work that the women do mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. kind of include him. I would lay um, my own house I'm excited. on fire. <laughs> Badger's, Badger's shaking her head over here mm-hmm. on the Ellsworth um, <laughs> in general. I, I, think. I, have, I have a question. Um, who do you guys think should be the commentary team on that show? Because ideally, I it should be an all-female commentary team. Mm-hmm. That's what I would assume. I don't know if they have people that can do that. Like, I know Renee Young was on NXT for a little while, but she wasn't necessarily the greatest thing in the world. Beth Phoenix is awesome. Like, I think mm-hmm. Beth Phoenix should be on whatever commentary team they pick if she's not wrestling. I feel like Renee did well, and I think uh, Renee paired with like uh, like Beth like was on the training wheels for a while, right? I I don't know. I don't re- I don't remember her being that like, and maybe it's maybe it was how she was produced. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I don't know. I remember it being kind of off putting. I don't know. What do you go? What do I, you guys think? Good. Um, I feel like. I want Lita to be on the commentary team, but I also want to see her wrestle. It's kind of a, you can't have everything, so you kind of got to get what you get. Um, I would love to see Renee, because she's grown a lot. Um, I would love to see Beth Phoenix, uh, Lita. I would, obviously, I want to see her wrestle more, but I would love to have Trish on commentary for that perspective as well. Lita and Trish were my first two as well that came to mind. Mm-hmm. So the, the, definitely have to be involved in some, some way to this. Oh, know? yeah. I'm, if we're so. not getting, like... Trish and Lita as a tag team, we should get either Trish versus Lita or Trish versus Mickey or something like yeah, that. Yeah, like, I mean, considering how many they called up to be part of that Rumble, that first Rumble, I, they're they're going to touch base with everybody they can to try to fill. And also, remember, this is probably going to be a four-hour pay-per-view. Wow, yeah. That's the other challenge with this, I feel. Well, I mean, the fact that they're going to be calling up NXT people... Yeah, that's true. That's true. Does, ...does lighten the load a lot because you have a whole huge roster on NXT of people who are like almost ready to be called up but mm. like can use that as a platform to shine. Right, right. Yeah. And I, I do want to think with NXT and I, I, I eat my dirt and I eat my work completely. Uh whenever uh Mandy Rose, Sonya got called up, whenever the Rise Squad got called up, I didn't feel like they were ready, but they've grown in so short of amount of time. 
And my fear with the NXT call-ups is, like you said, they're they're almost there, but not completely. They're they're not to fill a spot. And I I feel like NXT women, the NXT UK women, uh, the legends will have that spotlight, and it's their chance to shine. And I think it's a long time coming for everyone. I do want to circle back real quick, and I think um, you brought up a really good point with they do need to have a very strong uh, female presence when it comes to, like, building that pay-per-view. Um, like, Gail Kim's, like, deeply involved as far as, like, impact. Like, they need someone mm-hmm. strong like that to be, you know, putting that putting that pay-per-view together, you know, on that creative team side. So I think that's a really good point you brought up. On the on the go back to the creative. First of all, I never thought about that that there was never anybody female on the creative teams. I mean, there may be. I honestly don't I, know. I don't think there uh, are. I, mean, I know I mean, Sarah. Is Sarah Delray still doing stuff in the is. performance center? She's in she's performance tra- center. She's in training, though, as far as I know. But like, I feel like she also has a little bit of input, at least like in NXT, because it's the trainees and stuff, right? So I think she's around with that. And also, maybe it's it's. Um, you know, to something go back to like some things that that Triple H has said um, during like Tough Enough when with some of like like one of the girls like like I don't get it, but my 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 daughters love you, so we're good. You know, mm-hmm. so I think maybe the, I think the fact Triple H has daughters may be a big key in somebody in power with Stroke doing the push, right? I so, mean, that's a good point. I mean, he mm-hmm. literally has like the um, target audience. You know, yeah, right, right at home, and obviously Steph, right, right, right. Yeah, I, I think honestly, like they should just have a meeting of all the talent, and just kind of have like a brainstorming idea, like what can we have during this show? What can we have main event? What can we have like on the show? Because I feel, I think one thing I'd personally like to see is uh, women's tag team champions, and I think I think like, that happens here. I think it happens too, but I like I understand if they don't want to do a tournament to like overshadow the May Young Classic, but at Evolution you can do like a gauntlet match, mm-hmm. like a gauntlet match, and the winner is the new women's tag team champion. So you can, and that's where you can bring in like some some legends too. Like or, you can have like cool. You can also you can put, have you can, throw tri- you can throw Trish and Lita in there or the Bellas or something like that. Like yeah, where they'll have actual matches, but it'll just like it has a Royal Rumble feel to it. Yeah, you don't know who's gonna come out. Yeah, or or maybe a mini tournament, mini tag tournament of some sort, perhaps. Uh, maybe you know, like again, they'll probably have four hours to fill. So mm-hmm. you know, yeah, but a mini tournament, you don't want a lot of people working. That's yeah, true. More than more than once. Um, mm-hmm. and, and and we haven't seen much of what ha- what's going to happen with NXT UK yet. Of what's going to come out of that to fill that out too. I will say the NXT UK announcement. Um, I'm familiar with some of the women's work that have been announced, like Jenny. Uh, I can list off um, Millie McKenzie, especially. I'm so proud to see the scene blossoming and growing over there. Uh, and I mean, people are saying, you know, oh, they're going to ruin them. But you have to look at it from a perspective of, but you're not in their shoes. They're they're making money. They're being happy. They're, you know, people that they look up to. They're being in that position, working with the WWE. Um, and I think that's really cool. But also to kind of circle back to Triple H and his daughters um, and, I, I feel like Badger could relate to this a little. Like growing up, I didn't have a lot of, like on watching television, I didn't have a lot of strong female role models. And to see that the women are getting action figures, they're getting merch, the, the little girls that are looking up to them. This is a big deal because you have to have that strong empowerment, whether, you know, if it's outside of the ring or inside of the ring, you have to have that empowerment because women, even my age, are looking up to to Sasha Banks, Bailey, Trish, Lita, and everyone else. So, I mean, there's this step, and you have to accept that there is empowerment, and if you fall behind, you fall behind. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And did you have something to add to that? Oh no, I just I I completely agree. Um, you know, with I, that's one thing that I'm really happy to see. Like one of the things that like there's not a lot that like chokes me up, but like when these like I'll get little girls come up and like like hug me, and they're like, and mom's like, oh, she wants to do it, and and everything else, and that's the only time I'm like, oh, yeah, okay, this is this is good. <laughs> you this know, is, you're in the right place, right? Yeah, yeah, that's really like that's really fulfilling for uh, me. The circle back, and maybe this is a creative position, um, but Tina's pointing out that Sarah Stock is actually a uh, road agent with them. And I actually f- uh, 
and I'm not familiar. I, I, I guess she was big in, in Mexico, uh, where she, she mostly came up in. Um, but they have some stuff from a little bit ago about her at the uh, Performance Center and everything. Uh, so it's good to see. It. So there is some, uh, at least on the agent level, um, some influence there. So that's good to see. And that's probably, whenever you see the good stuff out there, that's probably coming from her, to be quite honest, right? Probably. Uh, it would still it, be. Oh, I'm sorry. Guys. But I was say, because remember, who was the women's person for the longest time? Fit Finley. Fit Finley. Oh, yeah. Remember? I, I, and like, I think he did some I, great I, I stuff with had, it. I think, but. Like, but I mean, he, he was the one who would really, like, like, he was the one behind the scenes that was kind of responsible for like the yeah. churches and the leaders and stuff like that. Yeah. Like, yeah. And I, in an era where they were bringing like basically models in and teaching them how to wrestle on the road, you know, and, and given that we got Trish from that kind of thing. Right. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's not like it wasn't without its merit, uh, you know, here and there uh, and in big ways with ones like that. Right. Not saying that the, the, you know, experienced, you know, like, you know, men, helping with with the women's stuff too not saying i'm taking away anything from that but i think they do need a strong um i didn't know the sarah stock thing but i think one of like the old school like almost having like you know trish back there or, or something like that i think they would just benefit just that other perspective because she's obviously been on both sides somebody that's been in that system yeah exactly you know, and dealing with those kinds of things that a woman's going to deal with on a Raw or SmackDown, right? Because that's a whole different animal than, you know, I mean, we, we talk about so much about you do NXT, you kick ass there, but it's a different animal working in that creative environment versus what you're going to on the big shows, right? I mean, right. you have way more hands involved in it, you know, way, way different uh, ways that they have to, you know, play. Your and, much, and much more exposure. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, you're on a bigger stage too to, to you know, do well or fail. You know, yeah, that's so the thing is, and I different. used to be very similar um, to what Lola was saying um, about always like, oh, they're up to the main roster, so now they're going to tank them. But it's mm -hmm. it's one of those things where it's 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 like it's experience. You know, I'm sure mm -hmm. it's very different, mm -hmm. you know, from wrestling at NXT to wrestling on the main roster. And so, I mean, they're getting that experience, which, I mean, you need. Like, you have mm -hmm. to you have to be either thrown or jump into the deep end, and it's like – you're either going to sink or swim. So I don't think it's, I try to look at that in a different light now where it's like, all right, let's see how they do. Almost like if you just put someone in a management position, it's like, all right, mm -hmm. we'll just see what happens here. Do you know what I mean? Exactly. Like you have to test them to see how they're going to do. So I try yeah. to look at that. I understand completely where you're coming from because they're like any other wrestler at the mercy of, you know, the mm -hmm. promote, uh, well, you know, creative in their case. But um, I, I think it's one of those things where it's like, all right, here it is. Here's your chance. And you just kind of, kind of, roll with it uh, on every case i always say you know if you couldn't float it in the wwe system that doesn't make you any worse of a wrestler it just means you're not compatible i'm not compatible with the day job so i work for myself right cole cabana wasn't compatible with vince mcmahon and his character doing his character so he started a podcast and he's doing cole cabana's thing right and young bucks are doing young bucks thing you know i mean that's you know, cody's doing cody things you know and 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 kicking ass in other environments you know it just it doesn't not everybody latches onto that on on either side of things so i say that all the time and people get like mad when they're like you know what's your biggest goal and i don't name you know wwe and they're like oh well what, what are you doing this for then and it's you know physic physically wise you know set aside mm -hmm. um i feel the same way i'm like i am not what i'm trying to do and like what i bring i don't think is compatible with their target audience like it's do you it, know what i mean it's not like it's unworth you know as a wrestler it's not unworth like pushing to see if they'll let you in the system right oh yeah i mean if so, they knock i'm gonna answer yeah do you know exactly. what i mean it's not one of those things like no i'm good i'm good see you Screw bye you i'm punk no, rock no, no. i'm good over here <laughs> Yeah, no, nothing like that. But I'm yeah. just saying, like, to me, it's that's not that's not in my five year yeah. plan because no. it's like there's other yeah. things that's more realistic. Yeah, yeah. And, and there's a lot of other. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Lola. That's okay. To kind of, I'm losing my voice. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, but to kind of go with what Thatcher said, I when people kind of when they when they try to mold you into something that you're not, or they try to force you into a mold, saying you should be doing this or you should be doing this. And you're kind of sitting there like, that's not what I want to do. I, I don't want to be like everyone else. Like as a podcaster, like some people get mad because of what I say or what I do. And I don't want to fit that mold. I'm not going to be a yes person just to be a yes person. I'm not going to tell you the things that you want to hear 
especially with products and, and wrestling in general, I'm, I'm just going to say how it is because if you bullshit, am I allowed to swear? Yeah. Um, if you bullshit everyone, then no one's going to take you seriously. You have to do you and you have to build a name for yourself, whether people like the way you're doing it or not. Yeah, integrity. And plus, and plus there's so many places now where even if the WWE system doesn't fit you, like look at someone like Taya. She is crushing it everywhere mm-hmm. she goes. Lucha Underground, Impact, like all these indie feds that she goes to, like I think she's going to Blackcraft. Like mm-hmm. she is crushing it everywhere she goes. Like, and eventually that could hit because Candice LeRae was doing the same thing, like three four years ago, going to PWG and stuff like that. And they eventually found a spot for her in WWE. So I mean, mm-hmm. the the best thing about the women's wrestling in WWE is that it's constantly changing. It's constantly evolving. Mm-hmm. That's I mean, obviously evolution. No pun intended. Yeah. yeah, no pun intended. But like <laughs> someone like Jazzy Gabber, like now that she's like free and clear, I could very well see her showing up, if not the May Young Classic, maybe debuting at Evolution. Mm-hmm. Like, I can see that. That would be amazing. They, they can rewrite a lot of rules here with this uh, pay-per-view coming up. I want to touch on the chat room before we move on here real quick. Marcus Mann pointing out that Lance Storm was also huge during that era. Uh, currently has some of the best trained women on the indies today. Uh, guys and girls. Every time I hear, like, mm-hmm. oh, they're from Lance Storm school, it's like, oh, of course they are. Right? Um, and uh, Dave saying, uh, in, in main eventing Charlotte versus Carmella, he thinks, and if Charlotte wins the women's match, uh, as a triple threat. No, uh, main event on that... SmackDown right now. Oh, main event on SmackDown right now. Oh, okay. There you go. Uh, sorry, context. Uh, I'm hoping they bring back Viper Piper Niven. Uh, yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah, I love her. her. Uh, and she, yeah, she's been making a lot of noise on uh, social media with everything too. Um, so, and again, just everybody being represented, right? I, I mm-hmm. think is really great. I think you saw that in the May Young Classic for sure. You know. And, uh, and a lot of those girls came over to NXT. And, and some of them, not for long. Um, uh, I can't remember her name right now. Um, from Chikara. Oh, um, oh, um, oh, Kimber? Yeah, Kimberly. Kimberly. Yeah. Thank you. Jeez, I don't know why I blanked on that. Um, but she's doing great, you know, back out on the indies and has some newfound mm-hmm. fire for that stuff. And she was doing great before, too. So, well, I yeah, it's all more exposure. Um, Oh yeah, exactly. That's all it is. If nothing, if you can get there in a minute, get it for a minute, and then you can do so much with that, you know. Um, yeah. Well, plus that a, that ups their quota in indies. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah seriously. Start, start the May Young Classic. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> right, right away. That's an extra twenty, thirty bucks for booking. Easy. That's two <laughs> two hot dogs and a handshake. That is probably out of context. Oh, I'm Jesus. so sorry about that. I didn't realize. Uh, well, but anyways, guys, always take it into the gutter. I'm Look sorry, at that. I'm sorry. Hey, you knew what you're getting. It right. is the Mayhem Show. We do, do right. have a parental ad- ad- advisory, <laughs> and we're not worried about pissing people off. Hey, if you guys want to take a peek at what Honey Badger is doing and other great women in the indie wrestling that you'll see one day on the May Young Classic or a WWE Women's Pay Per View or Impact or who knows who knows how many, or, how many or Lucha Underground crawling around or, giant chambers of secrets exactly or that or, or, or I don't know maybe Glow will come back remember when the height of women's wrestling ten years ago was us singing the Wrestlelicious song on this show I'm so glad <laughs> we've come so far and you can see some of it it was a catchy tune it was a really catchy tune it's a it's a very catchy tune. <laughs> That's it. That's Where what can it. you see that, Sorg? Uh, you can. I, I don't. I think it all got taken down because talk, talk shoe sucks. Uh, but anyways, um, <laughs> oh boy, uh, I tried. See how I tried to bring that. It's somewhere, somewhere out US, there. Sorg. It's somewhere, but no. But that's not what you're going to see. You're going to say something. Uh, Less offensive than that at Indie Wrestling US, <laughs> where we have so much uh, fun stuff. You can even if you check out our YouTube's and our Facebook, we got a lot of clips and previews, including um, a a wonderful tag team named Honey Bear from uh, Rise Wrestling. Here's a little clip of it for you guys on video. Here, um, that's one thing I love about Rise is like it's just completely every. Marcos was on a couple weeks ago talking about how how over there just it's it's guys against girls. It doesn't matter. Everybody else is on the same level over there. And uh, our own Honey Badger here uh, involved with Duke Davis, who Duke, Duke Davis dwarfs me, and I'm 6'4". Uh, <laughs> so, he's a big guy. He's a big guy. He's a big guy. <laughs> uh, that and so much more. I've been trying to put some clips out there for you guys uh, for the raw commercial breaks, uh, since we have these nice two-minute two clips uh, going on out there. A lot of fun. Uh, go check that out, IndieWrestling.us. And again, for, I don't know, the next two hours, we're going to probably extend this a day, right, Missy? 
producer Missy. Um, celebrate it's like July 4th. If you get our digital downloads on the old digital download system, this isn't a new new Vimeo system, uh, but if you get the uh, the back catalog there and digital downloads, um, you'll get buy one, get one free offer. Uh, so if you hook that up, you'll get an email with a code for uh, a follow-up with that. And also great interviews. we got a lot of interviews coming up here. I'll talk about later in the show, but you can t- check out our our, our one-on-one interview with Honey Badger and so many more uh, about how what got you into wrestling. You mentioned about Trish and Lita, of course, but we talked at length about that at one point. Uh, and you can check that out in the back catalog on Indie Wrestling. I'm sorry, the Indie Mayhem Show and so much more at IndieWrestling.us. There is a new VOD uh, system, digital downloads and uh, a rental system, thanks to uh, Vimeo.com, which means you can watch those now on your television. And also, we're working on something special we're hoping to launch here by the end of August. That will make it even easier for you to get your Indie Wrestling. So stay tuned for news on that, and please sign up for the newsletter. Um, and I believe it's not in my copy, but if they sign up for the newsletter, they get something special there too. Is that the thing that we were setting up uh, a couple days ago, Miss Producer Missy? Okay. There you go. There's a special link in the chat room. That's a little extra something for you guys to join us on Facebook Live uh, to get us something extra from Indie Wrestling. Us, which I believe is the first Rise show that we produced. Is that correct? From February. Uh, so uh, you guys are going to get a special link if you sign up for first timers to the mailing list. You'll get that as a free digital download in the Facebook Live uh, chat here on Tuesday nights. So check it out. Everything at IndieWrestling.us. Support Indie Wrestling and support our friends. Always. Always. I was so pumped when I got that email because I would lose and forget about that damn link when I would get shows. Because <laughs> I would buy, like, I bought, like, the Stomp Out Cancer show yeah, to, like, yeah. donate and everything. Yeah. Um, and I would... Oh my god! I remember being so terrified to email. This was like before I knew you. Like, hi, I forgot that it expires <laughs> and didn't like, save it. And you, I know you were like, "Hold on, where's your receipt?" And it was just <laughs> now here oh, we are. Check your spam. Where's your receipt? Okay, so yeah, this resend this the guy thing. Hates that's, me. that's one of the nice things because that means I can worry more about putting more wrestling out and not oh, of no. you guys. Like one day, I swear I'm going to edit those last two Black Diamond shows uh, and get those out there. <laughs> Uh, that's on the on the on the thing, uh, and 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 there's so much more we're going to be doing in the next few months. Uh, but if I don't have to keep sending Honey Badger her receipt <laughs> so she can redownload a show, and it's all taken care of in Vimeo because if you buy it, it's just like iTunes now. It's just gonna be there. It's in the app. You're good. You're good. Don't lose your password. Sorry. Don't give it to somebody in in Pakistan or something, right? Um, that'll be the new thing i'll be like sorg it doesn't work i got like, did you update did you I, update your then app i tell you to email vimeo because it's their problem now <laughs> did you try turning it on t- turning it off and turning it back on ma'am oh geez i want to spoil skyscrapers so bad every time somebody makes that joke oh, uh, <laughs> which i think i just did uh but anyways hey other things happen <laughs> None of us have seen that movie, so none of us get the joke. That's okay. That's okay. I, it's, it's, it, it, you'll cringe. You, Mike, you would just like, I, I imagine when the end of that movie happens, like, I just imagine Mad Mike just yelling at the screen, what the? Uh, but, anyways, <laughs> like, like he does during Raw. So, yeah, kind of. There's other things happening in wrestling. And this is the dude segment I'm realizing as I'm looking at this. First of all, Elias. He's a local ah, boy. Yes. He okay. uh, released an album that made number six on the iTunes charts. <sighs> Holy Hashtag crap. wrestling fans. Holy crap. Right. And it is Elias doing an album as Elias about how great yes. Elias is. To which and how terrible <laughs> every other city is. They, I watched last night the documentary, which does touch on him living in Pittsburgh. And I'm just like, well, why didn't he contact the only promotion that has footage of him, which is available at IndieWrestling.us, and the VOD <laughs> is up there on Vimeo <laughs> of Heavy Metal Jesus Logan Shulo. Ah, uh, you like how that works in? Uh, but 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 I was like, oh, of course, because we're just going to talk about how he drifted and <laughs> played music. <laughs> so, which is legit him. I mean, that is legit him. Like, he started with a mic stand, you know, and, and, and coming out and spitting lyrics. That's like, probably it was, how it works so well. Yeah. It, it, comfort it sound. is and he can do this and he can he's he is the the guitar based john cena basically right and what does um, the wwe stand for everybody walk, walk with, with Elias. Elias. jeez man it's just ready made for him and then like, he gets seriously on. that is just genius the most fortuitous happenstance 
since the Miz realized the <laughs> WWE logo is the first letter of his name upside down. <laughs> <laughs> You watch? Did anybody else watch the documentary they did on him? I, I have yet to see it. It is. I, it. Um, I can't say that I've watched a lot of um, um, Spinal Tap, but I'm pretty sure it's the same vibe. Um, oh, that's God, wonderful. Up to 11? At just, one point, just sold it because <laughs> of this, I literally just booked a trip to, Ca- to Cleveland. One, to check out our friends at Premier Championship Wrestling. Two, also oh. to finally go to the Hall of Fame so I can walk, walk in Elias' footsteps. Because I've just pain that i have never gone to the hall of fame rock and roll hall of fame he goes through the hall of fame they're working on a section of the hall of fame like legitimately working on a new wing and he's talking about how how that's their wing that they're working on so he's like (laughs) gesturing to it and talking about how there's going to be footsteps so you can walk it walk with elias and all this stuff like meanwhile like a guy walks by the camera just looking at him like legit like this dude was not a plant (laughs) <laughs> and and it's it's so great. It's a lead up to WrestleMania. They they do the they they show you the Bourbon Street uh pop up. I so wish I knew that was happening because I would have found that fucking place and burned it. To you the were ground. there. You were there. I would have been on fire there. Uh <laughs> no, that's Seth Rollins gimmick. Well, uh, no, I, I like metaphorically. He he does things literally. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. Actually, no, Seth, Seth Rollins is actually an arsonist, and he's wanted in at least three states. <laughs> yeah, I, I saw that commercial. He really destroyed the robe of her. Oh, jeez. Uh, Grammy it, it, requirements: it has to be over twenty-seven minutes long to be considered an album. Is it over twenty-seven? Is it no, over twenty-seven? It's, it's four tracks. No, no, it's an EP, not an album. Oh, that's so unfortunately. I swear to God, if Elias be... wins a Grammy, I. Oh my god! I if may Elias- have to like lay down for that one. <laughs> <laughs> like I'll just I'll just lay down and get in the fetal position and wait. That'll be two people I, I know with Grammys. I, I, think, <laughs> I think I think Miz has a legitimate shot to win an Emmy though. Oh, for yes. Miz and Mrs. For Miz ruff, and Mrs. Ruff, ruff. Yes. Oh, yes. for Ruff 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 too. If that's a Disney movie, if that's a Disney made-for-TV movie, oh. oh. Yes. That's a, that's at least a great. Ms. and Maurice was Ms. and Mrs. Oh, it was so good. It was great. Oh, it's geez. such a fun little show. They're <laughs> damn adorable. Oh, we need <laughs> to start a, We need to start a podcast for that now. Uh, and it's <laughs> only a half hour show. That's really? the best thing. Like oh, it doesn't good. it doesn't over it doesn't oversaturate you like to old Bellas and to old Divas do. Mm-hmm. Fantastic fantastic um but uh, so elias doing great things uh, is it's it's great to, to to see that and him just leaning into this so hard <laughs> it's it's good Re- recommend it go check it out um it, it's cool that they did the documentary in the style of the other documentaries but still just elias as elias awesome <laughs> just awesome um other news uh in sad news unfortunately nikolai volkoff passed away this past week i know there's some other ones uh some other other names that passed away as uh, well brian, brian christopher too brian christopher as well yes uh so um i uh my my fondest memory of nikolai volkoff is i had a little thumb wrestling guy with my hulk hogan pair and that's that's my Volk and and him singing the anthem that I never. I I actually met Nikolai Volkov was at once at a Comic Con. Mm-hmm. He was very nice. He was a very nice guy. Okay. He was there with the Iron Sheik. So so by contrast, he's definitely the nice guy. Hey, no, <laughs> Iron Sheik did did a did a voice line for us. Oh, that's right, that's right. He did. He yes, did. he did. Friend of the show, Iron Sheik. Friend of the show, <laughs> Iron Sheik. Oh, I need to pull those liners out again. Um, especially those ones with uh, Sterling James Keenan. Hey, who's that guy? Uh, ah. mm-hmm. We do have a Miz one too. Yeah, we do. That's, that's, uh, it's that's been a while. Gonna, gonna, we have a Ray Row one. Jeez, we mayhem bump uh, all around. But uh, dropping everywhere. Yeah, we have a Logan Shulo one. Whoever that guy. Yeah, is? I wasn't worried. Yeah, I wasn't worried about your name drop earlier. It's fine here. We like to do that. Oh uh, yeah, we drop we drop names all the time. It's it's like we have holes in our pockets. It is. <laughs> oh my god, pockets full of names. Oh look, Ric Flair. Oh, oh look. Um, oh look, Bruce <laughs> Fisher. Okay. <clears throat> oh look, my wife talking to Coca Cabana about pop sockets. I didn't know oh. what a pop socket. I didn't know that's what they were called. What is? Oh, I don't want to know. They're the little I'm... the springy things on the back of iPhones that people use to like pop up their phone and stuff. And oh, I went somewhere Apparently completely Col- different. Col- Col- yeah. 
Yeah. You don't know where I went when a Coca Man is like, oh, I got a, I got like a hundred pop sockets in my garage, and I don't know what to do with them. I'm just like, dude, that sounds like a personal problem. Anyways, um, also speaking of things for you to collect, lots of uh, kaiju big battle. I'm a big fan of kaiju big battle, the, despite missing them every time they come to Pittsburgh. Thanks IWC for your schedule. Um, <laughs> Actually, I think it was RWA and Rise this time. But anyways, um, they I speaking of name dropping, I had a chance to talk with uh, uh, one of the creators of Kaiju several years ago um, at a bar in Philly one time, and uh, they talked about the, the the action figures that never happened that were like this close. Well, I was so happy to see that they are doing a Kickstarter for. Um, do you guys remember? Okay, everybody here is way too young for this, but the muscle mini figures. Yeah, the muscle yeah, wrestling. Muscle uh, Mike's yeah. gonna know it, but I think everybody else is far too young for this. But um, they're doing kaiju figures in the style of those pink little uh, muscle figures. They're like they're like army men, but pink and wrestling. Yeah, yeah. So uh-huh. so you know, kind of in that style, and 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 you know, but you know, your guy is a waffle. Or Doctor Cube, or something like that. Uh, <laughs> it's it's pretty cool. I, I I put ten bucks into it immediately. Yeah, um, it's it WWE, sounds like a great idea. WWE, their uh, San Diego Comic Con exclusive this year was actually WWE muscle figures. Oh man, it was a it was a four pack of them. <laughs> but uh, here they are. If you guys are on video, here's a little bit of a shot of them here. I actually didn't watch this video yet before I contributed. They're at uh, as of this recording, they're at almost six thousand dollars of their fifteen thousand dollar goal. Uh, oh, Thirty days to go. Uh, Kaiju Big Battle. If you're not familiar, again, you see in the video, like they basically do wrestling with giant foam, um, like Godzilla monster, and sometimes um, peas, as you can see there in the video, um, <laughs> or and they're dancing sometimes. Just and... picture the best parts of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like the part without the whiny teenagers, right? Uh, but sometimes <laughs> waffle and chicken soup fights. Uh, you know, that, that's basically, oh, look, there's a, a Sky Deviler mother and daughter pairing. Um, so this is everything I want in weird-ass wrestling right here. Um, and I'm completely all about it. So uh, go check that out. Kaiju Big Battle on Kickstarter. Just started last night, and they're already up to like $6,000. So, um, yeah, I, I have to give a shout-out to that because I'm just so excited they finally got toys. That's amazing. And, geez, this is a roller coaster, guys. I'm going to get sad again for a moment. Matt Cross, also a friend of the show. Oops, I dropped another one. Um <laughs> How'd that get there? How'd that get there? Uh, there was a tweet uh, from his uh, tweet from his Twitter account. That's redundant. Um, he visited the old Lucha El Rey location, oh. and, and uh, had a, had a wonderful tweet about uh, made a quick stop at the original Lucha Underground Arena yesterday, a building that behind uh, the, that birthed the spirit that spearheaded a movement that uh, shifted the energy. We became uh, the change that we've wanted to see, and that's really cool that we're kind of at that spot to look back and. Uh, oh, wow. definitely fortunate, uh, to, to have seen, uh, some of the tapings there in that location. It's so weird to see it without that billboard up top or, you know, the food trucks and porta potties and, uh, <laughs> and the big Did lines of people. Did he find Rey Mysterio? Did he find Rey Mysterio? Uh, Rey's probably still there, um, <laughs> for sure. In okay. The ca- still just locked in that cage? Yeah. Yeah. Just underneath. Okay. Just, um, they'll, they'll find him someday, Mike. Don't worry about it. I think I, he. I fight all his rage. It's just a ray in the cage. Oh boy! Oh yes! Oh, and finally, I'm bringing it back up. I'm bringing my roller coaster back up again, guys. Cody Rhodes offers to pay a fan's way to All In. One, I saw one. I gotta say, Cody, uh, Twitter 101. You probably should have DM the fellow because now everybody's gonna ask. Uh, But uh, somebody had tweeted, uh, you know, hey, I bought a ticket to All In. This is a uh, the Axum Ranger. I'm not going to spell that for you. Uh, I buy a ticket all in from the way things are looking. I'm not going to have enough uh, funds for travel or hotel. It's literally devastating, but I'm still glad I got the ticket because it helps you guys. Take it easy, man. And there the trails off. It's like, what's your budget to get there in your PayPal? Cody says, holy crap. Uh, so, and this is, um, it was brought up. Where are they talking about that? They actually brought up, I think, I had a conversation with somebody this last week about how these like all inclusive weekends for wrestling are like a big deal. Like, oh, like uh, all in. There, there's actually a um a wrestling cruise that I found out it's happening 
the uh, yeah. day be- the day before SummerSlam in New mm-hmm. York City. Mm-hmm. What? Kevin Gill is putting it on. Uh, Kevin Gill yeah, of, of um, Juggalo Joe Championship G- Wrestling that uh, that, that was <laughs> announcing. Yes. Well, he does a lot of wrestling stuff on the, on the West Coast in San Francisco as well. Because um, I just saw a picture of him commentating um, over, and he was also responsible for the backyard wrestling game. Because I'm yeah, sure that's uh, a high so point we... in pro wrestling video games. I enjoyed it; it was a lot of fun. And M Dog was a part of it. Uh, but anyways, but yeah, uh, Joey Janelle is a part of it because, of course, um, uh, I'm assuming he's gonna, I'm assuming he's going to go by Johnny Cruise Ship. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Johnny Cruise Ship and Taya Valkyrie Cruise Ship. Uh, <laughs> I, sure. I, I love. Sure. I love just making so last things for him now. I love just making. He is. He is, and it was because she's wearing the shirt over there. He is Johnny Back Blackcraft when he comes to Blackcraft Wrestling here in Pittsburgh yes, this, uh, this next month. So, man, like, leading into like, that. Like, all right, um, John John Morrison, Johnny Mundo, if you're listening, your okay. next. And shirt we know idea, you are, and we know you are because we know we know you responded to all not, those. Someone you know might be. Yes. Uh, <laughs> your next shirt Back. idea should just be Johnny, and then a blank space for a last name, and just sell inserts. Yeah. Oh my god. Just sell inserts. Nitro, Morrison, Mundo, uh, Thunder, Jacked, Blackcraft, Cruise Ship, um, <laughs> Boone the Bounty Hunter. Just like okay. make a big long one. This is Boone the Bounty Hunter. I that guy, say, it's just a list that guy from Tough all. Enough, um, Survivor, because he's gonna oh, be on Giant Survivor. Yeah, he's, he's, I'm definitely calling him Johnny Survivor when I watch Survivor this season. But, <laughs> oh, jeez, Survivor's still on. Uh, yeah, oh, of course. Oh, it yeah, is. Survivor. Of course it is. Survivor is it's still on. It has, it's like 37 seasons. Until somebody gets like killed, that. it's gonna keep going. Um, like we, we we have some back. we have some comments in the chat room. Jackson Argos is in there, and he says, uh, "As much as I love him, oh. I totally wrestle Godzilla." Sorg, um, Sorg, I'm representing Jackson Argos. Oh, God, Get, Canada, Canada Dry. Can, Canada Dry, Jackson Canada Argos. Canada Dry. That's right. Canada Dry. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Got to represent. It's a lemon lime. It's a little uh, a little sweet and sour. Uh, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Speaking, of, sour, speaking of lemon Argos. face, Lee Moriarty <laughs> says he's been doing his lemon face all day, every day, on Twitter earlier today. So I don't know what that entirely means, but I hope he's at least tasted a lemon well, by now. He, he has to remember to do the lion face after the lemon face. That's right. That's right. That's, that's how you, that's that's how you exercise and stop smiling all the damn time. Jeez, you're the happiest heel ever. Stop it. Stop it. No, that that's that's Roman Reigns. <laughs> oh. Oh, jeez. Oh. Okay, uh, well, let's see if there's anything else real quick here. Uh, thanks, everybody <laughs> off in the chat room. Alex Cars, uh, Marcus Mann hanging out, uh, Tina Keys. Uh, I already said Alex Cars. He gets another. He gets another plug because we're gonna give him an ad later. Uh, Brandon's out there in Kansas City. Dave Podner of the Tiny Shutter Podcast. Tommy Trueblood's been popping up a lot lately. Not saying much creeps me out a little bit uh but so shout out to those guys thanks for being a part of the show uh but anyways uh, let's give a shout out to our friends supporting pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepper pizza i think i missed a syllable there uh slice on broadway right up the street here if you happen to be in town i know a lot of you are or you come visit and you check them out uh these guys have been really good with us uh, hey if you go in uh, there are wrestling fans up there, especially here in the Broadway location, right up from where we're at in the studio. Uh, four locations in Pittsburgh. If you're in town, check it out. The PNC Park, uh, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Although I think a lot of people aren't happy with them today, so I'm not going to get into that aspect of it. Um, no sports people, ball on this wrestling some podcast. Some people are, some people are not. We talk about real sports like wrestling. Um, <laughs> it's, it's still real to me, damn it. Uh, <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> I forgot my next line. Oh, no. The other two places are Carnegie PA and uh, the East End. Uh, Dave, don't kick the door down. Let them know the Mayhem Show sent you. And uh, thank you so much to them. PGH underscore Slice on the Twitter. Uh, We are going to be back with the big question with our guests here joining us here this week. And uh, we'll be back with that big question right after this. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at SidekickMediaServices.com. It is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Still rocking here. Uh, the Land Shark has been brought out. Not a sponsor. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Honey Badger is here. We just talked about Shark Week and Shark Week related things on Mayhem Show Gold. I 
Shark Week the show. Shark Week the show. Since Mike had to ruin that earlier. Yeah. Yes. I'm sorry. Yes. I'm sorry. Yes. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, I was, Mike. I was okay, trying Mike. to be the tone. aggressive and ended up being regressive. Uh-huh. Bad Mike is here. Poughkeepsie, New York. Doing things. Lola is here as well. Representing. First timer. We'll see if she wants to come back. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> you just bait me with new kids and I'm in. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's. That almost turned into a whole different podcast. Uh, but anyways, it okay. is the, the hardest part about podcasting is hanging tough. Mm. So we want to do the new kids dance. I want to use that now. I think that's going to be the end of my intro to podcasting course from now on. Um, <laughs> geez. What is? Oh, oh, geez. Uh, somebody just sent me the uh, Honey Badger Affidian video. Uh, we'll put that in the chat. Uh, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Honey Badger just ate snakes. Yep. Natural predator. Natural predators. Prey, Natural prey. You know, look out of Fidian when you come to Pittsburgh. How you badger gonna get you? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, it is time for the big question, and it's gonna go along with our theme this week. And Mad Mike had a good take on it. Yeah. Uh, so WWE Evolution is uh, at the end of uh, uh, October. Excuse October. me. October. And um. October, right around Halloween time. Hopefully that means we, everybody won't be wearing skimpy, weird yeah. Halloween outfits. Um, like no, not in wrestling. Not in wrestling, no. I, 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 no, never. Um, but we, we don't, like, that's really far away. We don't know anything that's going to happen for that. So my big question is, what is your dream main event for WWE Evolution? Ha, <laughs> And we're a couple months out, but there's a lot of there's a lot of pieces you can play with there. And I think certain people will come back from injury. Well, actually, Charlotte already did come back from injury. Well, tonight, didn't dream she? main event. You can book anyone. Oh, oh, okay. Dream main event. Dream. We're not we're not doing we're not doing mayhem mania rules. Dream <laughs> main event. <laughs> Whatever you not want. The, not the Velveteen Dream main event. That's something completely I, different. That could also work though. That would that would actually be pretty kind of amazing. Um, yes. I don't know. Ladies first, if you have one. No, Badger, you go first. <laughs> um, I don't know about main event. Just, um, I guess mine will can be categorized as dream match. I would do a uh, AJ Lee versus Nikki Cross. Oh, wow! I like it. Wow, I like it. That'd be a lot of fun. <laughs> what about you, Lola? Do you have one? I I actually was going to have Nikki Cross in mind as well, but um, I don't know. It's you know, there's so many factors um i would have to say because i i've always loved becky lynch so becky lynch versus i don't know uh well we kind of got one tonight zoe and omega and lana which was really good um really i don't mm-hmm. yeah so i don't i honestly don't know because there's so many great women oh i i'm gonna go same z's with what badger said <laughs> just because i can't think one <laughs> We'll go, we'll go around the horn if you yeah, if yeah, you want to we'll, change your answer we'll back. if you want to yeah. change your answer that's fine. Okay. Um, oh, I just thought of another one. Oh, that's we'll, fine we'll, too. We'll Hold on to it to the end. Hold on to the end. Uh, we we do we definitely do like honorable mentions at the end. So, um, Mad Mike, I want a fatal four way: okay. Sasha, Becky, Charlotte, Bailey. Boom. Ooh. that's mm. what I want. Because hot damn Alakazam, that's going to be, that would be amazing. Mm. Could, could this be, in my main event, I think I've called this before as a thing that happens at WrestleMania. But could we have, by the end of October, build up to four horsewomen versus four horsewomen? Ooh. Are all the places in peace for, are, are all the pieces in place for it? I not necessarily. Is everybody trained up enough, or at least to do a special attraction match? I don't even know if all four of the other four horsewomen are signed. At least three. I know. Are? I know three yeah. are. Three are. But I don't know about the. Four. We kind I mean, of played with this is happening one way or another eventually. Right? Yeah, I mean, would, that'd be so. that'd be great. That would be insane. Mm-hmm. Especially you know, playing off again more of the <laughs> UFC stuff. With what's happening with with Brock and whatever that's going to look like after SummerSlam, um, no, I think I think that's the way you go with it. So I mean, that is a big marquee thing mm-hmm. to have all those people involved versus yep. all those people involved, right? Um, yeah, uh, I, Bailey and Sasha are good now. 
you know. And the best have a thing team, is why not? They've already done a lot of the legwork for it, so it wouldn't necessarily disrupt the main programming on Raw and SmackDown. That's right. That's right. Mm. Uh, going to the chat room, we have, oh, jeez, we have a lot going on here, actually. Um, <laughs> oh, Tina says all of them are signed. So. I think, I think Marcus just called the same thing as I did, but he actually knows everybody's name. Um, <laughs> I don't, I don't know everybody's name. Unless that Duke is Duke Davis. I'm not sure. No, Justin Duke. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Tina Keys, Bailey versus Sasha, last woman standing. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, you were talking last night on the wrap up, Mike, about how you how how that that was taken away from you. Their bitter um, feud, maybe. Give it time. <laughs> yes. Give it time. Give it time. Uh, there's only a matter of time before one of them gets too close to a barbershop window. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's only a matter of time. Um. Not an incredible feud, man. Alex also calling for <laughs> at least this is the time for the four horsemen versus four horsewomen. Lando Landshark got opened up. Uh, 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 Tina right, says, I, ca- oh, I, I got okay. plenty more no, in the chat. I got go plenty more in the chat. Okay, Tina okay, Key okay, says, Dream okay. Match Aja Kong versus Nia Jax. Ooh. Yeah. 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 Okay. So I'm yeah, up for that. Yeah. See, one of mine was going to be um, not that I don't, I'm pretty positive she's not doing anything with wrestling, but Bull Nakano. Oof. And Naya. There you go. But Bull Nakano is, have you seen her lately? No. She is, I mean, I think she's in better shape now than when she was like wrestling full time. Like she's gorgeous. I mean, she was always like in really good shape, but like she is gorgeous oh, right now. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Right. Hold on. I'm going to pull up an image here for you guys on the video version, but yeah, I can't believe that's the same person. Yeah. That's incredible. I think it would be insane to see her step mm-hmm. inside of a ring. I don't know what her situation is. I don't know if like, you know, she has any desire for mm-hmm. that or if she's just but um there's a really cool picture with um her and Asuka that I want like printed and framed and in it, my house. And it's, and it's <laughs> not just because she's let her hair down. Uh <laughs> no, no. So, like um if you go I think it's on her Instagram, the one with her and I'll have to find it. I'll find it here real quick. But um wow, that's awesome. Wait, wow. Uh, yeah, okay, I was like... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're oh, all mesmerized God. by this. It took a second. Wow. <laughs> Good on you, Bull Nakano. Good on you. <laughs> took a second. Yeah. Good on you. Um, I, I, this is also a guilty pleasure of mine. This wouldn't may event. I want to see Karma versus the Bellas. Oh, Jesus. Like, that would be short. Like in a, like in a handicap match. <laughs> I was saying um, to, just to see these two, because it would just kind of be a different dynamic. Um, Blazer versus uh, Rousey. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then you'd have that UFC little little tough. Finishing up the chat room real quick. Tina Key is saying Dream. Oh, I said that one. Uh, Karma versus Nia Jax. Uh, Alex Karas, again, you mentioned Karma. Uh, Ronda versus Sonya. That'd be fun. Oh, That'd be yeah. Fun being the MMA. Yeah, yeah. Poor, poor Sonia. Being the MMA person, and then we signed all the MMA people. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, she's still doing stuff. Good for her. Um, let's see. Oh, apparently Alex is saying that Bull Nakano is trapped in Japan because of visa issues, but if anybody can help her out, it'd be WWE. There you go. Look at that. Ma- yeah, they- Manami they- Toyota they- versus Io Shirai. Another one. Yes. I'm not familiar yeah, enough. Yeah, that'd be good. Uh, any of those girls that want that were in the finals of King of Trios when I went last? Holy crap! Uh, <laughs> just please, any of that. That was the most amazing thing that I saw. Uh, first ever Queen of Trios that year. Uh, Tessa versus Charlotte. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. How about mm-hmm. all right? And this is this is. A oh, and, and before you do that, uh, uh, okay. Alex also saying Tony Storm versus Becky Lynch. Tina had like five oh, of yes. these, by the way. Uh, <laughs> so. How about how about Charlotte versus Alundra Blaze? Mm. Oh, I, I didn't even think of that. Of like, fun. oh man. I don't know if she's like it necessarily ring shape, but she's not in she's bad fit, shape. That's though. for sure. She's fit. Yeah, yeah I mean, like, uh, Tori Wilson even did stuff for for Rumble at least. Um, so, so there's a lot of possibility there, right? And <sighs> I, I would love to see Lake Cool versus the Iconic Duo. Oh jeez, yes. <laughs> that would just be that. Would, that's that's me. I I I love that. That I think that would be great. I think one person we're kind of overlooking is Shayna Baszler. Mm. She's been killing it on NXT as champion. 
That's true. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, we could Shayna versus Asuka. I'm oh, just throwing yeah. that out there. Oh, just throwing that out there. Jesus. The two most dominant NXT women's champions. <sighs> Shayna and Asuka would be great. Yeah, yeah. You know what? I, I think I, I'm changing my answer to uh, Melina versus Alicia Fox. <laughs> Definitely. The yeah. greatest women's <laughs> match of all time. It's a crack from Tough Enough with Stone Cold, it's, if you don't know as, that. As we all know. Who was that said that? Is she even Cameron, still around? Cameron. Cameron. Oh, Cameron that did the, car, the, did the, uh, did the uh, Kamala pin uh, several yeah. times, unironically. Uh, uh-huh. The real question is, is Santina Morella going to make an appearance at Evolution? <laughs> the real groundbreaker in, in, in uh, wrestling of some gender. Uh, hmm. Fun fact, he was on Impact the other night. Was he seriously? Wait, what? Yeah. And Whoa, he wasn't that's... himself, but he was on Impact. One of his trainees is going to face Austin Aries this week, I think. Oh, wow. Geez. Yeah. Wow. I need to get caught up on Impact. Oh, Impact. Oh, man. Dude, Impact. Dude, Impact. You know, Seriously. Yeah, but see, see, here's the thing. The reason why Impact is good now is because they're stealing from other promotions, not WWE. No, they're not they're stealing. They're stealing from they're Lucha and New Japan. I mean, it's it's a different thing. You get to see Brian Cage. You know, Brian Cage. I can see Brian Cage now every other week on El Rey. Thank that you is here. true for the next like 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 15 weeks. And then, Until October, I'm okay with Then that. you just have uh, Premier Championship Wrestling this past weekend. And uh, and Rob got to meet uh, uh, Brian Cage, and he, he did not pee his pants so that was oh, good we were a, we were really worried about that yes. he is a very lovely man i would he's not want to cross him. <laughs> i would not want to cross him at all no no not, no, I, no i wouldn't even want to sneeze around him yes he, although i love when literally he would literally tear me in thirds i was loving him that i would even try in thirds yeah like fold you over and keep tearing yeah nope, wouldn't even have to sort. <laughs> it'd be like a mortal combat fatality he'd just grab Shoulder to stern, rip in three equal pieces. You know, you know. Now that he's making appearances with a premiere in Cleveland, I, we're like one step closer to that dream match of Brian Cage and Jinx happening we talked about a while ago. Jesus, why? Oh. <laughs> Wait, hold on, hold on. She Who would just run that? into him and like explode into Legos. Like that's all. <laughs> If somebody films that, I will get the AV done anyone, on it, okay? Has anyone killed a My Little Pony? Because I'm pretty sure that's what would happen in that match. No, there was some joke. I, we joked about how, how she's like the size of his leg, maybe. Um, and that's that's what led into that, I believe. So, Or I just dreamt that. I don't know. Uh, it all blends together these days. I don't know what's real, kayfabe, something I dreamt one night happened on this podcast it all kind of is one thing in my head right now fever dream. what's that fever dream. fever dream fever dream that was a fever dream i had one that was a pro wrestling fever dream this looks like he sometimes, all sometimes i'm switching the show and i forget where i am at for a moment raise your hand if you haven't had a pro wrestling fever dream <laughs> I mean, that's, 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 I mean, I mean, we wouldn't all be here doing this if that if that was the truth. Speaking of people uh, having uh, uh, pro wrestling fever dreams, our good friends at Occupy Pro Wrestling <laughs> bought the. I want to talk about the, are getting the best lead in ever here. Uh, <laughs> pro wrestling is a wild and crazy art form if you haven't figured that out this far into the show. Uh, and our friends at Occupy Pro Wrestling yes, are here to look at what makes it fun. Featuring articles, blogs, and podcasts, and a podcast that brings you interviews with fellow fans, Occupy Pro Wrestling is putting the smart back in smart mark. You can check them out at OccupyProWrestling.com. Thank you to our friends over there. Uh, and, of course, big supporters of this show. They've been uh, getting the word out on uh, a lot of the shows and the interviews that we do do over here. And, of course, Alex over there uh, contributed on uh, recent. He's my he's my ringer whenever I get a Chikara guy in the interview because I'm not following Chikara quite as well as uh, Alex or Rizar. Um, Rizar? Rizar. 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 Riz R. Henry, yeah. Riz, Riz got a new job, and a friend of ours in podcasting is at the job and said he changed his name to Ghostface Killer. I'm just putting that out there for people that <laughs> get that joke. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> sorry. <laughs> I promise I'd bring we that to the show. We understand your method, man. <laughs> oh. Shit. Damn it. 
<laughs> Damn it. Right, hey, if you... Thank you seriously to our friends at Occupy Pro Wrestling. And if you want some expert ad reads like this to get the word out to this audience, God bless you. Uh, hit us up, producer Missy, at uh, info at sorgatronmedia.com for advertising on this show. Honey Badger, I heard you had an experience this weekend. I have no idea what you're talking about. It sounds like you might not be remembering it. I heard that you did a match in the style of New Jack. And not the bleeding part. Um, yeah, apparently um, the sound, I don't know what happened, but <laughs> apparently I had uh, I had a like a background music. And your music is the Badger song, Badger, 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 Badger right? Like, yeah, like it's pretty much it. um, my uh, uh, husband and Amy from the Motorcycles basically redid the Badger, 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 Mushroom, Mushroom, mm-hmm. but in like a heavy metal. I guess it's really catchy, and uh-huh. nobody hit the pause button. I don't know what happened, but next thing I know, I'm like, "All right, it's." There was a lot of confusion, especially in the crowd. It sounded like I heard <laughs> reports of maybe a large seven foot gentleman wanting to mosh in the backstage, and the crowd are really getting into it. You basically wrestled the match with this song with Katie Arquette. It did not stop until Katie Arquette pulled some shady shisty stuff and and pin me but then it did it but then it picked right back up <laughs> is this i'm presuming it'll be this a was not thing? i i swear this was not like was i had no planned. idea that this was happening like i was cu- really I, I there was confusion uh-huh. all around okay i was like i mean it's a good tune but the crowd it's, loved it it's a great song <laughs> and they just decided to keep keep going i don't know did did they just keep decide to badger the crowd with it? I'm so, like oh. I'm I'm serious on a real level. Like I had no idea. I was like, okay, cool. That's still my music, but we're about we've been like beating the shit out of each other for like three minutes, and I'm like, okay, cool. It's on loop. So <laughs> it just happened, and uh, the crowd eventually gave in. I mean, you know, <laughs> the lyrics are pretty easy. Luckily, yeah, you learn them <laughs> after a while. Jeez. <laughs> Um, that will be available for a uh, just... digital download uh, later in August, by the way. I hope so. For like, was... the three people asking for it, the three I... people are going to get more their now. digital download. That's, I, listen, I, I, I saw pictures from it. I'm hearing stories from this, the Revenge Pro and Erie. It's, I, I look at the card, and it looks like IWC and Rise North at, in all the good ways. Uh, and, <laughs> and, and that's amazing. <laughs> it's, you, the, you should just... They have a really good thing going on out there, seriously. Like, um, everybody should definitely, like, take the... It's not a bad drive for people in Pittsburgh. No, no, it's not. It's uh, not. September twenty first. You can go Friday. up, visit Presque Isle, go get like that, uh, get some some ice cream at Sarah's, and and watch some wrestling. That sounds like a good time. That's basically what we're going to do in Cleveland this month. Nice. <laughs> so you should you should just start bringing out a shopping cart full of stuffed badgers. <gasps> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this is what happens. We come up with merchandising just, like, ideas. Just, on like, throw show. One or I'm two just in the trying. Room. Damn it! I don't want it to turn into Disney. I'm just trying so damn hard <laughs> for it not to be cute. Disney. I just don't. I don't want like. I don't Disney want like, like. I don't want like squeaky badger toys. I don't want like but badger just, like, like hats. I don't like. I mean, I love. I. I mean. There's a right way and a wrong way to do merchandise, and I'm just trying to do it. The what if right it was way. a badass? What if, like, instead of a squeaky toy, it like growled at you? But it's not. Oh, we all know what it's going to be. It's going to be this fat little badger with good eyebrows because it has to look like me. And you're going to squeeze it, and it's like, <laughs> like, Hee-hee. we all know what it, like. We all know what's going to happen. But I mean, you say you don't want it to be like Disney, but Disney is notorious for like murdering people in their movies in grisly ways mufasa what? was trampled that mufasa is true. was trampled that is by, true. by the way if nobody got my lion king reference at the last flanimal house match you're dead to me edric was hurt very badly and i started jumping on edric screaming edric get up we have to go home <laughs> Was that at Rise? Yeah. Oh. There's there's like a there's, there's a little bit of it in there and I was like, man. That's I, amazing. 
I'm in another place when I edit, man. I, I wish I would have noticed that if you, one. If you didn't toss it, rewind to the end there. If you look at, there's any shot in the ring. There's me oh. with getting my head under his arm. Oh, Come on, God, yes, we have to go home. <laughs> and more reasons. And to I go. and I I knew at least I got it with one person because I heard a <laughs> oh, <laughs> and I was like, I just ruined that person's That's night. The exact right reaction though. <laughs> Oh, I'm getting sweaty telling that story. Hold on. <laughs> it's, like, it's like when Sasha and Bailey did the long live the king no, thing. No, no, we do not talk about that. <laughs> it, it is still too soon. Too soon. Too soon. Okay. Oh right. boy. Um, Hashtag long live the boss. Well, anyways, I had to get some love to revenge there, and I heard this was amazing. Uh, I also want to get love, but since we mentioned it, Rise Wrestling's this weekend. Uh, you were involved as part part of uh, Flannable House, Flannable Flannable House. I'm mm-hmm. I'm adding, I'm messing up my syllables again. Yes, <laughs> I need more coffee. <laughs> so maybe you should start drinking. Yeah, no, no, no. We know where that goes. We know where that goes. I, I function know. so much better when I drink. <laughs> That's what I'm I, I do not. Which unfortunately, revenge, revenge, tonight. pro wrestling also discovered. <laughs> Apparently, it's like yeah. I heard you 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 brought the beer party at the end of the show too. First of all, I didn't bring any beer because I'm a professional. <laughs> <laughs> all I was told was, hey, you know, this was a big deal for revenge. You know, there was there's some malarkey up in that area, and they put on a fantastic show. Like a crowd of, I think they had a crowd of like 200 plus people. That's like, awesome. I know that they had to like Unless go. They're... They had to go find extra chairs. So good for Jamie, and thank you, you know, Josh and Jamie and uh, Aaron and all them for having me involved in that. They're doing a really, really great thing up there. Um, so everybody should definitely be checking into uh, Revenge Pro Wrestling. But um, all I heard was, you know, we were just going to celebrate. I think this was like the first like real like show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I was they handed. Had like, they had like an outside show that got canceled, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. So this was like the real first one. And I was just handed some cases of beer and said, hey, we're going to have a little celebratory thing out in the ring. Mm-hmm. And apparently they haven't seen my work. And I, you know, I just handed out some beers and we all were very neat and tidy with our beers and just. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they had to leave that 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 ring. I am so sorry, Marshall, about your about your campus. Oh no. <laughs> well, whoops, sorry. <laughs> that's all. Well, you're gonna come away from this show with merchandising, and uh... this is true. <laughs> oh my god, there was a question in the chat room. Uh, Alex Miller out there on the, in LA is asking if the if it would be a blue badger. Uh, no, because this changes. I'm actually going back to my natural locks. <laughs> I've been combing this shit out for like a week. Yeah, I actually I, have. I actually have a blister on my damn hand from. Yeah, because you've been doing dreads for a while. I've seen on your Instagram the the um the the trials of uh, de-locking going de-locking, on. That's what it's called. Is that what's called? No, but that would have been a great. Other than like, I'm gonna comb this shit out. It would have been way better. Be like, so this is <laughs> this is de-locking. Mm-hmm. It's a very gentle process. That's what we do on the show. We make up words. Uh, <laughs> and sometimes drink. And then that goes Johnny somewhere Johnny make up words. That's new. Johnny, Johnny make up words. There yeah. you go. Ooh, if you ever teamed with Johnny Mundo, he could be Johnny Badger. He could be. Yes. I don't, that, I don't deserve to, I don't deserve to stand next to Johnny Nitro, let alone be wrestling in a ring with him. He's also pretty tall. Not even that. It's just, I mean. He's got a six pack, and I got a thirty pack in the back of my trunk right now. Like, it's just very different. Mm-hmm. So it sounds like a full party. <laughs> you guys, I'm not going to spoil it, but you guys that get the gold, you guys are going to have a you guys yeah. are going to have a fun time. Yes, I won't yes. ruin it. But yes, beer and Shark Week. All right. Uh, Congratulations. Here's the back of book. I want to give a shout out to uh, our friends over at Comic Book Pit on the Sorgatron Media Network. Um, slightly related. No, related to wrestling. If you go check out their interview with Ed Piscor, uh, he did the uh, X-Men Grand Design. 
Um, also, uh, the, the brother of a referee uh, here in the area. They talk about that a little bit on the show and some of the storytelling aspects and the fun stuff around that. Uh, definitely recommend it. If you're an X-Men fan, fan and a wrestling fan, you're in the right place. Uh, go check it out. Comic Book Pit. You can check out links from that over at SorgatronMedia.com. And I want to give a shout out to those guys. So what did you guys learn from wrestling this week? Mike? <laughs> I learned that the last match of Superstars was the breakup of the B team before the B team even formed. <laughs> oh, no. No, it's true. No, oh, no. Uh, no uh, the last match on WWE Superstars before it turned into 205 Live was actually like a really really good match between Bo Dallas and Curtis Axel. Really? Yeah, it was a really, really good I'm match. I'm not going to ask you why you're watching old superstars. I, you know, I get bored sometimes. You get bored sometimes. I get bored. Yeah. I get bored. Plus, I, w- I wanted to know where this B-team thing is going, Sword, potentially. Mm-hmm. You want to see the entire story. I want to see the B-team explodes. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Honey Badger, what did you learn from wrestling this week? Um, I learned that when, uh, I learned that when, uh, a promoter hands you, um, a bunch of beer and says, let's go have a beer bash, there's an asterisk and you need to find out exactly what that means. Cause apparently when you go out and have a beer bash, despite the fact that a bunch of sweaty men just rolled around on your ring and they bled and all that other fun stuff, getting beer on their canvas is frowned upon. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those things they don't teach you in wrestling school they don't no. yeah apparently beer bash does not mean um crush six cans of beer in 30 seconds i mean you the vision in your head is stone cold swimming in beer right that's what comes to my head yeah i mean that's what i thought i was like oh okay party well the fans <laughs> loved it i'm sure hopefully hopefully <laughs> lola what'd you learn from wrestling this week I got a tiny new kiss on the block and my love for Donnie Wahlberg because he is the best Wahlberg brother. <laughs> <laughs> I learned that he did the ring announcement at WrestleMania 10 for Shawn Michaels. Oh my God, he did. Oh. Oh, and Jonathan Taylor Thomas did the other. I believe. Is he uh, the one? No, he, Jonathan Taylor Thomas was the, was the timekeeper. You know, we have a guest timekeeper. You know, we have a Wahlbergers that just opened here in Pittsburgh. I know. I need it's to so and good. our friend, our friend Yajagoff had a, had a sit down on A and E. I think wasn't it with which Wahlberg was it? I think it was Marky Mark, right? Um, but uh, did, did he bring his funky bunch? I don't think there was a funky bunch. <laughs> I think Yajagoff was the funky bunch. Um, <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I learned. I learned first of all at Replay FX, every wrestling game is very glitchy. Uh, WrestleFest uh, restarted when Riz and I were playing it. I heard somebody else on Twitter saying it restarted when uh, oh. when uh, Earthquake was completely about to win the Royal Rumble. And also, oh, there was something. Don't... Oh, I'm sorry. If this guy oh, hits this my rent, really if this close. guy hits my rental, right. it's going to be over. Oh no, we're about That's to see a, a fight. I will stream this. Um... Is it Braun Strowman? Somebody, he doesn't like rental cars. Somebody's parallel parking in front of the studio. I swear it to is. God. He does not look good at it. You know it. why I have a rental? Because some idiot in the south side backed up into me with a truck that they didn't know how to drive. Oh, like so that So if this guy was right about there? to be like part two, I would have went through that window and oh, been like... I'm glad I paid okay, up I'm the sorry. insurance. I'm sorry. I just ruined the No, no. The that, that, that's actually enhanced it. Um, <laughs> now, now I'm even more sweaty. I need and to get under way these better, That's way better than what I learned this week. <laughs> I learned these lights are really bright. Yeah, we have an AC problem, too. It's, it's, there's a lot happening right now. Uh, we have a lot coming on. Holy crap. So I basically booked August last night. Uh, <laughs> first of all, if you guys are uh, around uh, the evening of August 1st, Wednesday night, I am dubbing it the night of too many interviews. Um, we are going to do five interviews. Two for our uh, compatriots at the awesome cast for the awesome chat. So if you like a board game called Drug Lord that's on Kickstarter uh, or or uh, indie games from Erie. Speaking of Erie, Venge Pro, indie, indie gaming, indie wrestling, it, it seems to fit. Uh, but also we're going to talk to, um, these guys entertained the shit out of me last month at Black Diamond. MT OSHA will be joining us. Uh, that includes, and this kind of goes with the, the question we had on gold, Dan Sandwich is a part of that. 
Uh, so <laughs> I have questions for him. Uh, and also, we are going to have that's going to be at 7 p.m. Eastern um, on the that's going to be on the Facebook Live on IndieWrestling.us. Just booked, so it did not make my list here. But we are going to have a double shot of um, Doctor. Uh, don't know what I'm messing up. Doctor Rockingham and uh, Derek D- Direction of AIW and Rise Fame. Uh, of course, they just coming off of the hot uh, AIW uh, Absolution this past week. A lot of crazy stuff happened up there. But they will be joining us at 9 p.m. Eastern Time Wednesday. And Sizzlin' Sand Styles, who's having the big intergender wrestling show in Wheeling, West Virginia, is going to join us at 10 p.m. And we're going to talk about that show. He is taking on, listen, you, you're probably, you, Joey Ryan, he's taking on. I know you guys are familiar with him, especially with uh, Lucha Underground and stuff like that. Uh, <laughs> I'm getting a look. No, no, I just. The perfect guy to bring up on the women's uh, show, right? <laughs> I love Joey Ryan. Mm-hmm. I cannot get I cannot get enough of Joey Ryan. I don't care how like gross and whatever, like in all your political shit, he is doing everything right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the funny thing is, you know what it is? He is probably like the nicest guy. That's what the funny thing is, because people with with that persona always end up being like, oh yeah, he's like someone who would like, oh hi, hi, I'm. I'm you know what um, I mean? Like, and then he gets out in the I ring and he's like, whoa! To... Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Every time. <laughs> yeah, that's that's exactly what he does. Uh, <laughs> just with baby oil and holy pops. But Stan Styles is kind of uh, kind of the uh, the other side of that equation too, because um, he does um, gestures with shake weights, weights, and and feeds um, 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 whipped cream to the audience. Um, he's been at RWA a few times. It's quite a scene. I've and, seen it. And you've, you've seen it. You've been there for that. Uh, that sounds unsanitary. <laughs> listen, I, I, I'm not... I, you know what? There's been the lollipop, man. Uh, but anyways... <laughs> uh, but dude, it's going to be a show to see. Um, and I, I can't wait to have a chat with him here uh, 10 p.m. Wednesday night. Uh, also, in the next few weeks here on this show, uh, Blackcraft Wrestling is going to have their first uh, inaugural p- iPay-Per-View show sold out here in Pittsburgh. Uh, we, we're having them well represented coming up. Matt Light is going to be uh, part of that, uh, joining us next week. Uh, so uh, we, uh, comedian Matt Light, of course, if you don't know him from Blackcraft, you may know him because you've seen a comedian somewhere in Pittsburgh uh, giving a stunner to the uh, promoter of the Pittsburgh Improv. It's that guy. Uh, we had a lot of fun with him, uh, and I still have the middle finger foam thing uh, that we'll, we'll bust out for that that he gave us last time. Also, Lady Frost and Victor Benjamin, the uh, the Savage Gentleman, also going to be on that show. They're going to join us here on um, August 21st, and I believe this is right after the one-year, one-year? Two-year. Two-year anniversary of Premier Championship Wrestling. Joe Dombrowski... Jeez, I can't say anybody's name. Joe Dombrowski... Dombrowski Taking a drink. Joe Dombrowski of uh, uh, announcer for Future of Honor on the YouTube for Ring of Honor uh, will be joining us uh, August 28th. And on the 23rd, the Brohemoth Super Smash Brothers Invitational. And if I'm not mistaken, I can I can I think I can drop this exclusive up here. The first person to accept the invitation is the honey badger. Me. That's right. It's going to be here at the studio. Button mash, button mash, button mash. <laughs> We're going to have eight <laughs> pro wrestlers playing Smash Brothers. Uh, and uh, and and what happens next? Who knows? Uh, <laughs> I'm just putting that. Sword, sword, sword. You know what happens next? Hmm. Mayhem. Yes, absolutely. Uh, we already have our kind kind of sponsor for our friends at Mega, pa- Mega Cat Studios here in Pittsburgh are, are donating some games for us to do in the cool off periods, uh, some unreleased stuff. Uh, so thanks to them for that. And so we got a big month of mayhem in August coming up. And thank you everybody for being a part of that. Uh, keep, stay tuned for the Patreon Rumble. Thank you, Honey Badger, for joining us. You're at Rise Wrestling this weekend. I am. I will be at uh, Rise wrestling this weekend representing uh with flanimal house against uh, the main event and then i will also be um at the benefit show for uh lord zoltan the very next day up in cheswick pa that's awesome that's awesome um and uh and and uh what do you, you have your schedule on your social media where can people find you online they can find me at instagram at uh regina honey badger and then they can find me uh on the tweeter at uh, Regina H. Badger, and I'm also on uh, Facebook. There you go. I think that's all my social media. 
Uh, Lola, where can people find you online? Oh, goodness. So you can find me on the tweeters at Lola underscore Bradbury, on Instagram at Lola underscore Bradbury. Um, and you can find me on TWM News UK, that wrestling podcast. We have some awesome stuff coming up. Um, hopefully, I'll be getting back into my interviews soon. Hopefully, I don't know. Also, Shakara Pro has some really cool stuff coming up with King of Trios. If you're not going to All In, go support King of Trios. Philadelphia area, obviously. Go support them. Some really cool stuff. Um, and yeah, so we'll see what happens there. And yeah, follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Awesome. But Thanks for will, joining I us. Will, um, yeah, thank you. And also Mad Mike, Mad Mike 4883 on the Twitter. We will be getting lined up to return to the Mayhem <laughs> Underground podcast this week. Yes. Um, and, uh, <laughs> yeah, we'll there, get... there's been a little bit of a scheduling. Conflict. Yeah. I, I decided to travel for two weeks. Uh, right. Well, you, you traveled, I traveled, we crisscrossed somewhere. In yeah. Yeah. We actually... I went to a different country, you know, you did go to a different country. Stuff. We went to opposite ends of like, I was in your neck of the woods, but South you were in my neck of the woods. We did, did a geography like lesson last night. Like it was weird. It was weird. Yeah. It's like, two it's... ships passing in the night. That's right. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, at Sorgatron on Twitter. Please check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. All the links to subscribe. Please share if you like this stuff. If you're a first timer, uh, share with your friends. Be like, hey, there's this kill little podcast over here. It's like it's like been around for a little bit. Please go check it out. Um, that's my that's my comic book guy voice for podcasting. I think uh, so. <laughs> worst loser ever. Yes, yes. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope you had a blast. Sure. We'll see you guys next time. Sure. Thank you, producer Missy. Producer Missy, yay! Yay! Wait. Mayhem out. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.